Get a flat on the parkway? Uh, got left at the toll gate. Oh, their wife and kids said thanks for the tickets to the Astrocell broadcast. Glad they liked it. They didn't. But the wife said say thanks anyway. <laughs> Sixth floor. Tally ho! Good morning, Mr. Bolton. Good morning, Alice. Has the day's hysteria started? Yes, sir. Mr. Tomes said, are you here? Mr. Pfeiffer sent up the layouts. Mr. Willis didn't come in on account of poison ivy. And the meeting has been moved up to 9.15. No. Holy smoke. Oh. Mr. Bolton? Yeah? Mr. Bolton? What? Oh. Sorry, Alice. Good morning, Fred. Oh, hi. Let me be the first to give you the good news. Mr. Dugan is coming to your meeting. Dugan. Thomas Fitzpatrick, eat him alive, Dugan, chairman of the board of Allied Drug and Food, Mr. Aspersell himself. I'm dead. I know, but we're all behind you, my boy. It's a good place to be. I wish I were there myself. Good morning, Catherine. Dugan's coming to the meeting. I know. The staff's inside having a nervous breakdown. Yeah, yeah, so am I. What time is it? 9.07. I've already sent the material upstairs. Uh. Bless you. The saddle's been making me sneeze all the way from West Hill. Did you take your antihistamine? Uh, I've taken seven. Have a messenger pick this thing up, take it to the... Oh, a Brockenhurst saddle shop on 48th Street have seam stitched. Your daughter phoned. She said Daddy would be sure to get everything all mixed up. Hmm. That's a smart kid. Can you imagine, Dugan? Didn't he give you any warning? No. Don't I get any mail but bills? This guy can wait, pay half of that. A polite stall letter on that one. S.J. Clemens Writing Academy. Didn't I pay this once? No, sir, but you did shove it aside several times. Catherine, I spoil Helen, don't I? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, that's what comes to being mother and father at the same time. I spoil her double. I mean, Good morning. Oh, Fred, 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 so if I know, Freddy. Fred, what are you going to do? Like All right, now, I know, know Fred, you don't, don't have the layout. All right, now, everybody, relax. We're going to be relaxed. Pete, I know that you don't have the layout. Ta-da! Charlie, what is that? Kind of leaves you a little breathless at first, huh? Well, I said you could suggest something like this in a drawing. Okay. I didn't I have a drawing. Yeah, but, but, but I think three-dimensional. A drawing couldn't even possibly convey the impasse. Charlie, I... Yeah, but I, I've been working on it for weeks just to surprise you. 
On my own time. Nights, lunches, coffee breaks. My drawings in color. Uh, look, Charlie, take this thing back. Put it in its space capsule. You, you gotta see him work. Look, you put the pill in here and it lights $900? Oh, we can turn them out cheaper than that. Catherine, am I reading this right? Here's the address. Nine hundred dollars? That's right. For riding lessons? Freddie, please, don't knock my little man till you see him in action. How can anybody owe nine hundred dollars for riding lessons? You gotta see how he works. Mimsy, get me a Who pill. Who is this S.J. Clemens, anyway? I'll have him run in for extortion. Well, Freddie, just watch this. This will really grab you. Charlie, take this monster. Yes, Gladys, I'll tell him. It's upstairs. Mr. Dugan is in the conference room. Let's go. Freddy? Okay, Charlie, bring your friend. It's too late now. All right, ma'am, see the pills. Catherine, if anybody calls, you know where to locate the body. Gladys, they're on their way. Charlie, the next time I leave you alone with an idea. But, Freddy, you haven't even given my little man a chance. I tell you, you'll steal your heart away. Mimsy, the Sixth pills. floor. The big pills are just like the little pills, only they're bigger. Mimsy, come on. Oh, Mimsy, Mimsy, the right. elevator, honey. Excuse me, folks. Freddie, wait till you see my little man work. Hey, Mr. Bolton, I see you got yourself a jockey. What happened to the rest of them? He uh, just couldn't pull himself together, Joe. Come on, Mimsy, get the pill. I'm trying. Seventh floor. Oh, out, out, please. Oh, is this ten? No, ma'am, seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. I've got it. Good. Now, when I tell you to give him the pill, give him the pill. You ready? Ready. He's got a short circuit. No, that's just a gimmick, Freddy. We start out with an inflamed, sensitive stomach, like the guy had a, an overdose of salami or something. Now, what happened? The minute the stomach gives out the alarm, old Aspicel goes to work. Ten out. Give him the pill. Watch this old speedy Aspicel who reaches down the old esophagus, hits the old elementary canal, and zoink! Zoink what? Zoink, it's stuck. Out. Ten? Twelve. Never mind, I'll get out anyway. I think I'm in the wrong building. Zoink! Instant. Instant. Aspicel, Aspicel, when you're sick, it'll make you well. Instant relief. Anybody got an Aspercell? Harry, Aspercell's been a pretty good client over the past 15 years, hasn't it? Ah, uh, best, Tom. You going on with that, Fred? Uh, yes, sir, I certainly do. And we've worked pretty well together over the years, haven't we? I think we have, Tom. Right, Fred? Uh, yes, sir, that's right. And why are you people trying to hand me this imbecilic, half-baked, old hat, gimmicked-up campaign that wouldn't even sell life preservers at a shipwreck? Where's the imagination around this place? Oh, may I say? Why, this stuff wouldn't even keep the clients that we've got. I want new markets. I want to move up in class. Tom, may I say? Harry, get me the jet set. I want you to come up with an idea that will give sour stomachs class and dignity. Hey, you got a great idea there, Mr. Dugan. Class. We can take my little man, put a tuxedo on him, a high silk hat, and a... How's the family? Tom, may I say... Harry, I want a brainstorm. I want something that'll give us the in crowd. I want to make them wish that they had excess acidity just so they can take Aspercell. Tom. Harry, that idea is lurking at the bottom of somebody's tired skull. I am giving you people just 24 hours to dredge it up. Tom, may I say... Harry, don't say anything. Just start thinking.
24 hours, Harry. Twenty-four hours, Fred. Twenty-four hours. Judy Gardner, heels down, Judy. Barnaby, sit tall. Work with your horse, not against him. Pick him up, Jana. Helen, Helen Bolton, will you ride with Jana and show her? Remember, if you want to learn how to go over fences, first you've got to learn how to ride. Very good. Okay, that's enough for today, kids. Now, those of you who are putting your horses away, be sure that the stalls are closed. Barnaby, let me see your horse for a minute. Go ahead, ask Susie. About fathers? Why not? She had one, didn't she? Tomorrow we'll try a different bit. He's not happy with this one. Susie. Susie what? Well, it's that big problem again. I know. Helen wants a horse of her own more than anything in the whole wide world. Well, she should have one. You said yourself she's the best rider in the class. And all I said was, she ought to try the favorite father treatment. I couldn't, Judy. And just what is this, uh, favorite father treatment? It's simple. All you do is put a rose at his dinner plate, bring him a cold martini and say, Daddy, tell me every single thing that happened at the office today. Then what? Then he says, let's talk about something else. So you talked to him about buying you a horse. I couldn't do all that stuff. Why not, for Pete's sake? My father and I understand each other. Judy, I think this is something that Helen should decide for herself. Come on, boy, come on. There's Daddy. What's he doing here? Wait a minute, Susie. I want you to meet my father. Talk to him. Talk to him. Daddy! Oh, hi. What are you doing hi. here? Hush! Daddy, you're not getting allergic to me, are you? Those clothes, honey. Did you bring your antihistamine? Yeah, yeah. Where's the office? Right there. Oh. I wish you had told me you were coming. The class just finished, and, and I've been dying to have you see me ride. Honey, I want to see you ride. I really do, but I've got a briefcase full of homework. I just came by to deliver the saddle and to tell S.J. Clemens the rules on highway robbery. I'm Miss Clemens. May I help you? Well, how do you do, Miss Clemens? Where's your father? My father? S.J. Clemens, the owner of this pirate's den. I'm S.J. Clemens. Susie, this is Daddy. Daddy, this is Susie. You know the one I'm always talking about? How do you do, Mr. Bolton? Now, about this pirate's den, I assume you're objecting to the charges on your statement. I think I'll go put this saddle in the tack room. <laughs> you sure you're S.J. Clemens? If you refer to the statement, Mr. Bolton, you'll see there's an unpaid balance for the past seven months. No way to run a business, Miss Clemens. You should have gotten a hold of me personally and chewed my head off. Oh, I intended to. Most parents come down here occasionally to see their children ride. I can't even see my child in jodhpurs without sneezing. I'll draw up a detailed statement and send it to you. In the meantime, I've got work to do. Miss Clemens, Miss Clemens, wait a moment. Look, I apologize. I, I had a miserable day in the city, and I took it out on the first available person. I shouldn't have blasted off that way. That's quite all right, Mr. Bolton. We get used to tantrums dealing with children all day. Well, you finally met Susie. Yes, yes. Uh, finally met Susie. Daddy? Yeah? Uh, Daddy, we've always had the kind of relationship where if one of us wants to ask something, we just go right ahead and ask, right? Right. Well, what I want to ask... Uh-huh. Uh, what I want to ask you is... Yes? 
uh, how did things go at the office today? What? Or would you rather have a cold martini first? Honey, I'd rather have a cold martini, period. Slide in. To the best of families, in uh, the, uh, all things being considered, I like Aspercell because uh, status, uh, upper crust, carriage trade, uh, money in the bank. It's a traditional, uh, in, in the best, best of families, best of families, it's a family tradition, huh? Asper, sell for relief. Maybe you just might have something here. Let's see. In the best of families, it's a family tradition. Aspercell for relief. Aunt Martha, you think I should bring them another martini? Over the roses, time? I think it's a little too late for that, dear. Care. What's he doing in there? He's been there ever since dinner. He's creating something about sour stomachs. Carry Aspercell. I'm getting punchy, Herbie. Hey, bury it deep, huh? Okay, Aunt Martha. You can stop working about out there with Helen. Whatever it is, hit me with it now while I'm weak and helpless. Oh, we weren't lurking, dear. Mm -hmm. We were merely waiting patiently. What is it you'd like to buy that we can't possibly afford? Oh, uh, well, dear. No, Aunt Martha, I'll tell him. After all, it's my problem. Daddy, I'll... No, dear, I said I'd tell well, him. Well, Aunt Martha, if you tell him... Helen, I'm sure it would be better no, if I told him. Well, somebody tell me, okay? I mean, flip a coin. I've got to get back to work sometime tonight. Daddy? Hmm. Daddy, I want a horse of my own more than anything I've ever wanted in the whole world. Susie says if I had a horse of my own, it would give me confidence, and I'd be in the ribbons at the really big shows. And... And, um, how much will it cost me? Well... Hundred dollars? Well, dear... Two hundred dollars? Uh, close to two thousand. For a good one. Two thousand dollars? <laughs> Do you have any idea how thin the financial ice is around this place? I mean, I mean a few items like the mortgage and two cars and, and, and a private school and, and, and nine hundred dollars for riding lessons and now you're... Freddie, we've been skating on thin ice for years. Well, we're about to get wet. <laughs> Well, suppose we do no, this. No, Aunt Martha. Daddy's right. We can't afford a horse. I was silly to ask. I, I never should have brought up such a foolish thing. I'm sorry, Daddy. Really, I am. <laughs> well, she really wants that horse, doesn't she? Yes, dear. Two thousand dollars. Is she really that good? Why, she's the best in her class, Freddy. First place, junior equitation. And if she had her own horse, she could graduate to hunters. Uh, they jump over fences and things, dear. Huh. For two thousand dollars, I'll jump a few fences myself. Now, Freddy. I don't know why she's so steamed up about a horse anyway. A boy, I could understand. Now, if she had a boy problem, I could help her. Oh, Fred. She has got a boy problem. She what? She's terrified of boys. She thinks she's homely. Homely? Helen thinks she's homely? But Aunt Martha, she is a beautiful girl. Oh, yes, Fred. I know this and you know this, but Helen doesn't. Oh, I'll try to understand. It's just part of growing up. You see, that's why her writing is so important. It gives her poise, a sense of accomplishment. Homely. Well, I'll try to figure something out. I knew you would, Freddy. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> now, do you want me to clean up this mess? 
And Martha, this mess is what's left of my career. No, no, just go on to bed and let me pull the temple down around my own shoulders, all right? Oh. Would you like a glass of warm milk? Wouldn't help. Good night, Aunt Martha. <laughs> Good night, Fred Bolton. Good night, Asper Silla Count. Good night, Tom Dugan. Good night, everything. Ask for cell, ask for cell. When you're sick, it makes you well. When you're dead, you're dead. That's. A gimmick. <laughs> gimmick, a gimmick, a gimmick. My kingdom for a gimmick. <laughs> Double play. A horse for Helen, high society for Dugan. Now, if we want the class market, we've got to make Aspercell the end pill, from Bar Harbor to the Uritz. We've got to give our product social acceptance, a new image. What we want, Mr. Dugan, is to have the name Aspercell associated with high society. But we want to do that in such a way that the general public is not aware that it's happening. That means we go the subliminal route. And where do we begin this campaign of ours, Mr. Dugan? where society's social season begins, at the horse show. I said at the horse show. Joe, what do we do? We shoot for free publicity at horse shows all over the country. Picture a beautiful young girl on a fabulous horse. Everywhere they appear, the eyes of the social world are on that girl and that horse. Their picture is on the fashion page. They're in the best magazines. The class trade is captured. And what is the name of that fabulous horse? Aspercell, Mr. Dugan. That horse's name is Aspercell. What do you think of it, Mr. Dugan? I like it. You like it? Yes, sir, I like it. We could get free play in all the class media. Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Illustrated London News, hit TV. And if a gimmick works, we can expand. Enter a boat in the America's Cup race. Call it the Aspercell. Good, good. Sponsor a car in the Indianapolis 500. How about a wrestler named Aspercell the Terrible? You keep rubbing. For the culture nuts, the Aspercell Philharmonic. Terrific! It's endless. But we'll start with a horse. You buy the best one you can find. Who are we going to get to ride it? Helen Bolton. My daughter. She's a champion, Mr. Dugan. Won all kinds of prizes. OK. But register the horse under your daughter's name. Keep Allied Drug out of the picture. Yes, sir. And tell Harry Thomas to make you a vice president. Could I? What'd you say, Mr. Dugan? I don't like doing business with small fry. And call me Tom. Yes, yes, sir. Tom. <laughs> Outside, inside, feed bin, heavy-duty suspension, handles like a sports car, and a quick loading ramp that comes right down there. This is the star's dressing room. Herbie! Come on, Herbie. Come here. Come on, boy. That's Herbie. Oh, very elegant. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not everything meets the eye. Would you step back over there just a little bit more, please? Yeah, that's it. Now watch. <laughs> you won't believe this, but I designed it myself. No, 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 I believe it. Just a little oasis for the riding contestant's father. Would you care to join me? <laughs> uh, it's a... I know it's a little fancy. You don't think it'll scare the horse, do you? No, I'm sure he can take it. He's a very special horse. Yeah, well, for 5,000 bucks, he should be. 
<laughs> well, you told me to get the best, Mr. Bowden. Oh, yes, no argument, uh, Miss Clemens. That I did, that I did. Besides, that's not high for a double champion. No. He won both the Junior Hunter and Equitation medals at Harrisburg last year. Uh-huh. Well, he's really very good, Mr. Bowden. I'm sure he is, Miss Clemens. Uh, he's also very late. He forgot what time he was supposed to show up. Well, it's a long haul from Pennsylvania. Yeah, hey, while we're waiting, you want to watch some television? No, thank you. You will help me celebrate. I did my celebrating when I got your check. Yeah, well, I can't blame you for that. Besides, I've got to get back to my Saturday cross-country class. You know, I think I'm as excited about getting this horse as Helen is. Daddy, he's here! He's here! I think he's here. That's him, all right. Hey, that's him, all right! Helen! Okay, over here. Bring him out. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Stop. That's fine. Uh, we'd about giving you up. Yeah. The whole trip, he's been banging away like that. A nine-horse trailer all to himself, and it ain't good enough for him. Let's get His Royal Highness out of there while I still got some trailer left. Oh, Daddy, he's beautiful. He's all yours. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Aren't you supposed to unpack? Listen, mister, it took a breast hitch in front. Two guys shoving at the back to get him in. You get him out. Do you want me to get him out? Oh, no. No, no, we uh, have to live with him. We my. <sighs> Might as well start now. Daddy, please let me... No, no, no. I'll handle it. Look out, dear. Don't let him hurt himself. I'll try not to, Aunt Martha. Now, uh, ask for sale, you just relax. Just relax. Everything's gonna... I'm the friendly type. Who's type? Hey, this horse is allergic to people. <laughs> I'd give you an antihistamine, old boy, but I think you better consult your own physician. We're just gonna unhook this. No, you're right, we're gonna unhook. Well, you old guzzler. I is it all right for him to drink beer, Susie? One palmful for medicinal purposes is okay. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. <clears throat> gonna unhook. Now that's it. That's enough. You're gonna that off there. Off. It's nice and easy. Let's take a walk. Here he comes. Ask for self. Meet your new boss. Hello, Aspie. You're beautiful, just beautiful. Oh, I think he's returning the compliment. Mister, you sure got away with horses. Yeah, I do, don't I? <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to make this discovery myself. Oh, Aunt Martha, would you help this discerning young gentleman to a bit of refreshment? Come along, young man. Thank you. All right, honey, would you show Aspie his accommodations? He's decided to stay.
Hi. Hi. My brother, Ronnie. Ronnie Helen Bolton. Hi, Mr. Bolton. Oh, hi. That's what's her name, isn't it? Yes, dear. We'll see you at the end gate after you've unloaded. Okay. Things first, honey. Is anybody ready to eat? Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Class 34, Hunter Seat Equitation has been rescheduled. Daddy, that's me. We have tomato sandwiches. It can't be. You've got an hour yet. I repeat, Class 34 has been rescheduled. And liverwurst? Herbie? Herbie! Exhibitors in this class to the in gate in three minutes, please. Three minutes, Daddy. Don't panic. Get your saddle. All right, Asby, move over. Give me some room. Back it up. That's it. Easy does it. Easy to... Attaboy. Attaboy. Move it around now. Bring it around here, honey. Okay, now. Give me that. I got it. Honey, take this uh, uh, thing. Daddy, it's on backwards. Uh, what? Uh, are you? Class I've got 34, it riders to the ring, please. Daddy, I'm going to be disqualified. No, you're not, darling. You're not going to be disqualified. We'll make it. Have you got it? Almost there. <laughs> All aboard. Here we go. Okay. Good. Where's the bridle? Good. What? Daddy, I have to have a bridle. Well, of course you do, honey. Where is it? Class 34. Class 34. Hunter's seat equitation over. Daddy, I'll never make it. I haven't even got my number. Uh, honey, I'll put this on. You go get the All right. number. Okay. All right, boy. Open your mouth. Open your mouth now. Spread your teeth. May I help, spread, sir? Spread. What? Can I help you here? Oh, yes, yes. Can you unscramble this thing? I think so. Well, we're kind of in a hurry. Uh, these things are pretty tricky till you catch on. Not that I'm the horsey type, but I get dragged to these shows, so I had to learn something. You know, actually, I could do without horses. But... The only way I get to have a sports car is if I haul my sister to these shows so my folks won't have to do it. Uh-huh. Could I have the breast hitch, please? What's that? Oh, 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 the better hitch, yeah. Daddy, I got it! Number 313. I hope it's not bad luck. Well, hi. Well, I guess you're ready, sir. Uh, Ronnie, I'm speechless with Last admiration. Call, class 34. That's us. Okay, up you go. Where does this thing go? Oh. You're off, sweetheart. See you after the event. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. And Martha. Did you find Herbie? Oh. Only left is two pickles and a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. Let's hurry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Susie. Everything went wrong. It's all right. You're on last. Now take a couple of deep breaths, count to ten, and relax. I'm relax, Helen. Relax. 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 Is Helen going to jump over all those sticks? Yeah, yeah. That's a general idea. First exhibitor, number 183, Janet McGrath, riding Solomon. The exhibitors today, ladies and gentlemen, will follow in the order indicated in your programs.
are all doing very well, aren't they, dear? Well, the judge doesn't look too impressed. You know, Tom Dugan's become a fanatic. He's got himself a rule book and a schedule of shows. He sent me a memo a yard and a half long, wants Helen entered in every metal class possible. Metal class, dear? What's that? Well, it's sort of championship events. There are about half a dozen of them each season. If she wins three medals, she goes to the World Series, the International Horse Show at Washington. Oh, Helen's going to Washington? That's what Dugan says in his memo. Oh, how nice. She'll love the Smithsonian Institute. Last exhibitor in class 34, number 313. Aspersell? Aspersell, oh. written by Helen Bolton. Here she comes. <laughs> Great! Great! Had a girl! Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, was she great, huh? Uh, the horse is very good, sir. You bet he that is. That completes the class, ladies and gentlemen. All exhibitors back in the ring, please. Aunt Martha, she's gonna win. She's gonna win. Ha <laughs> ha! But keep calm, keep calm. Number 128 and number 313 are excused. All other entries will please line up in numerical order. Excused? What's excused? Uh, well, she's out. Eliminated. Why? Well, she just wasn't good enough, sir. Blue ribbon wasn't good enough? She won! Where's that umpire? Frederick, control yourself. Written by Wendy Powell. Second place goes to number 132. Creole Land, written by Judy Town. Third place, number 215. Rob Roy, A great start for my vice presidency. Fourth place, number 129. Big Chief. What happened? Why wasn't she good enough? Fifth place, well, sir, uh, first she tried to put the horse in the wrong pattern. And then she panicked and decided he knew more than she did. From then on, she was just a, a passenger. That's what the judges call a push button ride. Push button. Yes, sir. Well, don't let it throw you, Mr. Bolton. She'll do better next time. Thank you, Ronnie. And Martha, find Helen and cheer her up, will you? I'll meet you back at the trailer. Well, where are you going, dear? To have a word with S.J. Clemens. Let him know who's boss, Barnaby. Good. Bring him on through again. Very good. Now bring him down here and stop for a minute. Oh, hey, that's great. Now you go out there and you knock him dead. Uh, Miss Clemens. Uh, Mr. Bolton, if you're worried about Helen, she's fine. I told her that, well, everybody loses on their first time out. Oh, well, I'm very pleased that uh, Helen is happy, uh, Miss Clemens. However, I would if like to... If you're looking for her, she's right over there at the soft drink stand. No, I'm looking for you. Uh... Oh? <laughs> Uh, Miss Clemens, I'm a little concerned about the fact that uh, all of a sudden my daughter is something called a push-button passenger. Oh, it wasn't that bad. She was just a little nervous, that's all. All right, well, she's a, a nervous push-button passenger. <laughs> On a $5,000 horse, uh, let me ask you a, a logical question now, Miss Clemens. What happened? <laughs> I mean, what? I thought you told me she was good. Well, she is. All she needs is, well, a little more practice. Give her a few months. Months? Are you one of those parents who has to win every time? Well, of course I'm not, but I don't have months, Miss Clemens. I mean, not if she's going to win three medals and qualify for Washington. Washington? Oh, you are one. The worst kind. 
if if I weren't so fond of Helen, I'd... Well, now, just a minute. Now, oh, just a minute. all you need is a, is a bull whip and a pair of jack boots. Ah, now, it's all very well for you... Excuse me, Mr. Bolton. I promised Barnaby I'd watch this go round. Trot your horses, please. That's very good, Barnaby. Miss Clemens, what would happen if you gave Helen a lesson every day, including Sundays? She might start winning. She's got natural talent. She's got a good animal, but uh, she needs work on basics, simple horsemanship. She's got to develop a partnership with that horse of hers. Will you do it? Do what? Whatever you said, every single day. And don't ask me why. Why? <laughs> I like you, S.J. Is it a deal? It's a deal. That's absolutely... Now you try it again and don't depend on the reins. Balance, legs, make him know what you want him to do. Okay, I'll try. Come on, Aspie, communicate. You know, I've been sitting on this bony fence for almost a month now, watching you and Helen, and I've been asking myself a question about you. I know, Mr. Bolton. I've been watching you sitting here on this bony fence every day for the past month, and I know the exact question. You do? I do. Helen, that's much better. Now take him through again, slowly, without the jump. Question. How come a pretty girl like you, A, isn't married, B, isn't engaged, C, prefers a quiet evening at home with a good book to A or B? That's very close. How come? Two years ago, I was uh, one day away from getting married. His name was Archer Madison. And he had several million dollars more than was good for him. Whoops, I'm sorry. I knew I shouldn't no, have No, 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 that's okay. Balance, Helen, balance. Archer looked so beautiful on a horse. He rode on the U.S. equestrian team. So, well, it would have been a perfect marriage the way Archer saw it. We would tour the world together forever. On horseback. <laughs> but that wasn't the way you saw it. <laughs> Not quite. I didn't want the patter of little hooves. I wanted a two-footed family with an ever-faithful True blue helpmate and all the rest of the cornball trimmings. You're okay, SJ. <laughs> That's enough, Helen. Walk him for a while. When I return tomorrow, we can discuss your early childhood. You won't have to come back, Mr. Bolton. Helen's graduated. I've entered her in the Oak Valley show. I think now she's ready to start winning some ribbons.
Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Our first medal. Oh, it's marvelous. Two more than on to Washington. Washington, Mr. Like Bowden. Susie, from now on, it's great. Oh. Oh. Okay, everybody. Cheese. You look kind of flaked out. Oh, it's just a cramp. It, it's gone now. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bolton, I've had my agents checking on you lately. You're tensing up. Why don't you kick the horse show habit for a couple of weeks and relax? I'm having a wonderful time, Ronnie. Yeah? Uh, would you like a root beer? Uh-uh. I'll tell you what. I'll take charge of this case personally. How about a movie tonight? A movie? Me? I mean us? And afterwards, maybe a pizza or something. I really ought to practice. Well, let the horse practice. Thanks, Ronnie, but I can't tonight, really. Well, then how about Friday night? Friday's the show at Rockford. Then Saturday for sure. And no excuses. OK. I'll come by for you round six, and you'll be ready, you got it? Oh, and good luck. Huh? On your metal class. Oh. When nothing's feeling well, I said a reach, a reach, brother, a reach for Aspercell. Hey, did you write that, boss? Sure That's I pretty did. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you know I used to play guitar. Hello, Freddy. Well, 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 Mr. Dugan, this is a pleasant surprise. Uh, ask yourself, meet your sponsor, Mr. Thomas Dugan. Mr. Dugan, this is your four-footed subliminal gold mine. I'd like to speak to you privately, Freddy. Uh, privately? About this subliminal gold mine. Sure thing, Mr. Dugan. Hank, uh, walk him around a little bit and then saddle him up, will you? Sure, boss. Come on, meatball. Uh, Hank. His name's Aspercell. Yeah, I know. How come you pick a stupid name like that? A lousy stomach pill, no less. <laughs> Hank thinks he's a comic. I only keep him around because the horse laughs at his jokes. <laughs> I've been working on a brochure of our progress so far, Mr. Dugan, and as uh, soon as the dust settles just a little bit, I want you dust to... Dust has already settled, Freddy, and most of it's on you. What's that? I'm going to give you a chance to level with me. I think this whole campaign is something you cooked up just so your daughter could get a horse for nothing. Now, wait a minute. I've got faith in this I idea. don't want faith. I want that international class publicity you promised to get me. I want Vogue and Harper's Bazaar, the Illustrated London News. I want TV cameras, and what do I get? After two months of hard work, you come up with this. Miss Helen Bolton won first prize last Saturday mounted on aspirin. Oh, that's a hot item to bounce off Telstar. No, I have gotten better stuff than that, and you know it. That's a dirty curve. I didn't come here to argue. Then lay off. What did you say? I said lay off. I got a great idea here, Mr. Dugan, and you're a smart enough man to know I have. Now, give it a chance to build. I'm going on the road next week. I'm going to see editors in Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago. If I don't flood the class media by the time my little girl gets to the Washington International, you can have my job, the vice presidency. You have a lot of confidence, haven't you? You bet I have. No. No, I haven't. I'm just as insecure as the next guy, but get off my neck. Give me a chance to make this thing work. All right. All right. You get your little girl to Washington. She needs two more medals. She'll get one of them this afternoon. She'll get the other one next Friday at Rockford. That doesn't sound as insecure as the next guy. Well, fortunately, I'm not riding the horse. Oh, yes, you are. There's a lot riding on that horse. The Allied drug account. Your job with Tomes? Oh, I'm going to keep my eye on that horse. 
I only hope he's strong enough to carry the load. Make me look good. We've got to win this one. Good luck, Helen. Good luck, Helen. Class number three, move back into the ring, please. Winner of the AHSA Hunter Seat Medal class, is Miss Helen Bolton writing Aspersum. Oh. <laughs> Come on, honey, how about a nice big smile? Right over this way, that's it. Fred, give her a hand. We won. We won. We haven't won yet, Susie. Chicago? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. I'll be home tomorrow night. But uh, I'm just phoning to, uh, well, to find out how everybody is. Oh, everyone's fine. Just fine. Good, good. I lost at Rockford. Oh. But it's okay, Daddy. I'll, I'll still get to Washington, so please don't worry. Well, I'm not worried, honey. Uh, Susie checked all the entries at Millbrook, and she says I'll be better than any of the other kids. Uh, Helen, So look. I'll get that last medal. I promise. Uh, uh, honey, I'm not worried about... Uh, Look, I just phoned to, to to find out how everybody is. So well, everyone's fine. Well, good, good. Uh, look, I'll see you tomorrow night, okay? Okay, Daddy. Okay, don't you worry about Rockford. That's an order. All right. I I'll try. Uh, all right, honey. I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye. See you, Daddy.
body. I took an early plane. Helen? And Martha? Herbie? Anybody. I'm home. Oh, yeah, I'm home, all right. Well, look who's here, loser of the week. Back to your paddock, chum. And no beer for you. You blew Helen's medal, but good. One more like that, it's the glue factory for both of us. Oh, I know, I know. One of the judges had a thing against gray horses, huh? <laughs> and uh, your cinch was too tight. <laughs> yeah. Now, right at the moment, Ashby, I don't feel a need for any of my four-footed friends. Just get lost. Will you go jump a fence or something? Okay, all right. I'm sorry. Hey, Ashby, come on back. You can have a swallow. Got to live with myself. Hey, stop sulking. I apologize. Hey, you're taking this thing a little big, aren't you? Huh? Beer, Aspie. Ice cold beer. Aspie. I apologize. Aspie. This is no time to be running away from home. I am never going to speak to you again as long as I live. Come on, admit it. You weren't mad. You were just exercising your sense of humor. Boy, boy, I... I I'm through playing games, Aspie. I, I know you. I'd reach up for your mane and psh, you'd be gone. Okay. So you're not gone. But after what you put me through, don't be surprised if you get a very formal Christmas card and no present. Uh, you don't mind if I put this rope on, nothing personal. Okay. You know something, old paint? We're a long way from our diggings. You wouldn't, you wouldn't give a guy a lift, would you? Come on, we can give it a try anyway. Now, I don't have what you'd call a good seat, Aspie. No points in equitation, but uh, now just stand right there, okay?
Don't look at me like that. They do it all the time in the movies. Okay. Steady. Easy now, Aspie. No. No, boy, no. Aspie! Come back. Back up. Whoa! Okay, don't move, pal, huh? No, no, you're moving! You're... Okay, you win. We'll both walk home. As soon as I see where we are. I... Okay, wise guy. Why didn't you do that in the first place? Oh. <laughs> All right, uh, old paint. Easy. He's not in the Walsh's field. No, of course not. He's been kidnapped. Oh, Aunt Martha, maybe he just wandered off or something. Oh, with the study window wide open and your father's clothes scattered all over the place? I'm going to look for him on the fire road. No, 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 you wait right here, and we'll both go and look for him in the car, just as soon as I... Oh, hello, police. Uh, this is Martha Ramsey at the Bolton House on West Hill Road. I'd like to speak to the person in charge of stolen horses. Stolen horses? Oh, oh, yes, I see. Yes, ma'am. Right out of your stable? Yes, y yes, yes, go ahead. Gray coat, brown eyes, and a small scar on his right flank. Yes, ma'am, I've got it. And don't you worry. We'll search every back road in the county till we find him. You know something, Aspie? This beats the horseless carriage any day. No traffic. No, uh, noise. <laughs> no smog. Wouldn't it be great if we had an 815 horse to commute to the city, huh? <laughs> Peaceful, serene. Oh, oh boy, easy, easy. All right, all right, all set. Right. No! Hey, hey, look out! Ah! Stop, stop, you're under arrest! I'd like to see that guy's license. No! <clears throat> oh, boy. Oh, buddy. Come on, baby, stop. <sighs> oh. ah. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Let's stop for a beer, huh? Sorry. Hey, you pull over. I'm trying, you idiot. <clears throat> oh, buddy. Aspie! Oh! Whoa, whoa. It's a nice jump. Watch the trees. Whoa. No. No! No! What? Okay, cowboy, don't move. You're under arrest. 
Steals its own horse. Charlie, you idiot. I've got a family to think of. I am thinking of your family. Tones will make you a partner for this. Okay, Charlie. You spring me right now or you are fired. <laughs> you too, Alex. Sergeant! Sergeant! Ready! Sergeant! You gonna tell him who I am, Charlie? Yeah, I'm gonna tell him you're the guy who's choking me. Alex, get a picture of this. I rate citizen chokes his best friend. Sergeant! Sergeant, I demand you force him to identify me. What's my name? I don't know. Big Chief Horse Blanket? Sergeant, my name is Fred Bolton. I live on West Hill Road. Are we gonna start that again? Now, can you identify this man or can't you? Never saw him before in my life. We're taking pictures for a magazine article. <laughs> Crime in the suburbs. Sergeant, and let's be... Look at these shorts. Now, would a self-respecting thief go around stealing horses in shorts like this? Why not? Because it's insane! Hey, there's a fresh angle. Call a psychiatric ward and see if they misplaced one of the patients. If! Okay, that's enough. You and the beard. Out! Certainly, sir. Just one more picture. Alex. Uh, Sergeant, Sergeant, please. Uh, come. Sergeant, call my house just one last time. Now, my aunt is bound to be there by now. She'll identify... Alex! You... She'll identify me. She'll also tell you who that creep is. Name calling will avail you nothing, sir. Come on, Alex. Charlie Blake! Ha ha! Ha ha! See that? See that? He knows his own name. Of course I know my name. What's your name? That's a question. Thanks for your cooperation, officer. Come on, Adam. Sergeant, Sergeant, don't let him out of this building. They're gonna make a fool of me in the newspapers. That will be no uphill battle, believe me. Oh. Hey, Sarge. Yeah, Eddie. The lady from West Hill Road just called. She came home and found the horse in its stable. <laughs> what, uh, did you ask her? Did you tell her? Well, I told her we got a suspect here who says he's your nephew. Yeah? And she says my nephew isn't a suspect. He's in Chicago. I, 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 I took an early... I demand that I call her back immediately. Too bad, Mac. You just ran out of phone calls. Why don't you make yourself comfy? You've had a very busy day. <laughs> As if I didn't have enough problems about you running away. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Don't you ever do that again. And now for five minutes of the latest news. On the lighter side, Connecticut's first horse snapping in many years is solved. Aspercell, a well-known jumping horse, returned late this afternoon to his owner, Miss Helen Bolton. Aspie, that's us! But here's the topper. The alleged horse stealer turns out to be the young lady's father. Mr. Fred Bolton of West Hill Road. <laughs> Don't ask us why, folks. We can't figure it either. On the international scene, things are not proceeding quite as well. Oh, Aspie, it was one of Daddy's publicity things. <laughs> Hey, Tiger, that you? That man is here. Hi, Ronnie. Why? Well, hey, why aren't you dressed? Dressed? Well, it's Saturday. Remember our date? Oh, yes. Uh, it is Saturday. <laughs> hey, uh, you are standing me up, are you? Well, Ronnie, you see, Aspie disappeared this afternoon. You are standing me up. And I have to wait for Susie. Susie. She's coming over to see if Aspie's Aspie. all right. I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. Hey, that's great. That takes care of everything. All my plans, my whole Saturday. 
Look at me. I even wore a tie. Isn't there anything you think of besides horse shows? I hate horse shows. What? I hate them. Well, then, for Pete's sake, why do you keep going? If I don't win at Millbrook, I won't win another medal. And if I don't win another medal and go on to Washington, my father will lose his job. And... And... I, I'm sorry you had to wear a tie for nothing. Well, I didn't mean to... Get out of the way, will you? Hey, wait a minute! What the heck was that all about? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Bolton, we'd uh, like to apologize, sir. You do, and I'll never buy another ticket to your annual clam bake. Mm -hmm. Souvenir. Well, good night, gentlemen. Oh, good night, Mr. Bolton. <laughs> uh, I'll return the costume tomorrow. Was a pleasure booking you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if I decide to steal another horse, I'll call you. Mr. Bolton? Oh, hi, Ronnie. Yeah, I thought that was your car out there. What are you doing, waiting for Helen? No, sir. I was waiting for you. There's something I gotta say, even if it does get you upset. Upset? You may really get mad, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Mr. Bolton, I've always admired you. Is that supposed to make me mad? I always thought you were a real nice guy and a real swell father. I admired you. Until tonight. Yes, sir. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to do, but... But I know when I have kids, if there's a situation where they don't want to do something, well, I'd never make them do it. Even if the only reason they were doing it was so that I wouldn't lose my job. Lose my job? Shh. She's cracking up, Mr. Bolton. She really is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are we... Are we talking about Helen? Yes, sir. I've always admired you, Mr. Bolton. You said that. Sit down, Ronnie. Now, suppose you tell me everything you know. Well, all I know and is... And slowly. We... Well, all I know is we had a date tonight, and I showed up with a tie and everything, and I asked her why she was standing me up. And then she started raving about winning medals and how she had to go to Washington or you'd lose your job. And then she started bawling. Put your dinner's on the stove, huh? I seem to be coming down with a cold. How come you never told me you hated horse shows? What? Who told you that? Ronnie told me that. Oh, Daddy. And uh, what's this nonsense about uh, my losing my job? It isn't nonsense, Daddy. I heard what Mr. Dugan said at Lakeville. I didn't mean to listen. I, I just heard. Well, I don't care what Mr. Dugan said. You know, a job's just a job. But what's here at home between... That's what's important. I mean, that's important. I'm not going to lose that. You're not going to ride in any more horse shows. Oh, Daddy. Daddy, I can get to Washington. No. Susie, she's coming over here. She was going to work with me all week. Daddy, if I practice... No. Even if I want to? Now, listen, you, you try to con me, I'm going to take you across my knee like I used to. <laughs> you never took me over your knee. Well, I should have. Are you uh, 
Wipe that smeary face and get outside. Ronnie's waiting on you. But I look terrible, and, and he's wearing a tie, and I'm not even dressed. Well, I, somehow I don't think it'll matter. <laughs> now, go on. Daddy, will we have to sell Aspie? Are you kidding? Of course we're not selling Aspie. He's a member of the family. <laughs> Ronnie? Well, Herbie? I wonder how the market is for slightly used vice presidents. That's all. Good, good. Now all I have to do is figure out how to feed him on my unemployment check. You'll find a way. I do have one angle. I'm thinking of joining the circus as a bareback rider. <laughs> and don't knock it. Aspie and I went over a seven-foot wall this afternoon. Seven feet? And one inch. The police measure everything. Aspie went seven feet. I personally went 10 feet for a flash finish into a lath house. Uh, you will tell me, old boy, won't you, when you plan to uh, stop that fast again? Fred. Yeah. Supposing Aspie did make it. To Washington, I mean. No, no, no. Helen's through riding in horseshoes. I'm through on Madison Avenue. Well, stop feeling sorry for yourself and listen. Sorry for myself. Supposing Aspie were entered in the... Open Jumper Championship. Dave, why do you say I'm sorry for myself? Because I like you. Because I like Helen. I like Aunt Martha and Aspie and Herbie and, and the whole insane setup. And maybe I have an idea to save it, that's all. You know, you look rather fetching when you get all steamed up like this. Listen. Do you have any idea how many horses there are in this whole wide world that can jump seven feet? A handful. Aspie may have the stuff to go for the biggest prize of all, the Open Jumper Championship. That's impossible. He's a kid's horse. I mean, just because he was on the lamb from if the If he did it once, he can do it again. And if he made it to Washington as an Open Jumper, wow, that's really big league. And you get a thousand times more publicity than uh, with Helen in a junior class, right? Well, sure, but... Aspercell, Open Jumper Champion. How would I like drug like that for a subliminal commercial? You know, you might be in the wrong business. Is it a deal, then? Yeah, it's a deal. <laughs> well, you get a good night's rest, Aspie. We've got big plans for you. Good night. Good night. Uh, so soon, can I buy you a beer? A uh, cup of coffee, glass of milk? No, I want to get a good night's rest myself. We haven't much time. I want to put Aspie in training tomorrow. Do you really think he has a chance? Naturally, I want to get an expert opinion before we go too far. Your opinion is good enough for me. There's one man who can tell us in a minute. I want to get him. Then get him. You're the boss. Fred. Yeah? I'm sorry I said you were sorry for yourself. I didn't mean it. Yes, you did. And I was. <laughs> oh, uh, S.J. Uh, yes? Ju just one question. Yes? Why are you being so helpful? Hmm? Well, I mean, uh, who are you doing all this for? Couldn't be Helen. She's out of it now. I guess so. Not Tom Dugan. You don't know him. No, no, that's true. Not Aunt Martha, is it? No, no, it's not Aunt Martha. No, no. Well, <clears throat> I guess that only leaves one conclusion, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I guess it does. I must be doing it for the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, S.J. I must go. Helen and uh, Aunt Martha and... Herbie like you too, S.J. Good night. The whole family likes you, S.J.
This will have to be moved about 18 inches. Hi, Daddy. Hi, honey. Uh, I got tied up at the office. Am I late? No, you're just in time. They're going to try him now. Yeah, for what? The pole vault? That thing looks 10 feet high. No more than five and a half feet, Daddy. Isn't it the craziest? Is that the expert fella out there? Yeah, that's him. Where do you meet him? He's so handsome, you're going to go all swoony. I'll try to bear up. Where's Susie? She's in the barn with Aspie. Hey, you sure this guy's an expert? He used to be on the United States equestrian team. Now he's a professional coach. He knows more about jumpers than practically anybody around. Mm. Uh, Mr. Madison, I'd like you to meet my father. Oh. Daddy, this is Archer Madison. How do you do, Mr. Bolton? Mr. Madison, I've been looking over your horse. If he's as good over the fences as he looks in the stall, you might have something. Well, good, good. I hope so. Here they come. I'll check with you later. Archer Madison. Isn't he devastating, Daddy? Devastating. Hey, he's, he's the one that Susie almost got to... Uh... I know, she told me. How could she ever have cooled it with anyone so gorgeous? Well, if she cooled it, it looks like he's heating it up again. Oh, Daddy, he's just giving her some last-minute instructions. Maybe that's what it looks like to you, but if you ask... What do you, what do you mean, instructions? About what? Hey, what is she doing? Well, she's going to ride him. Susie? All the top riders were booked for Washington, so it had to be Susie or else. Well, that fence is too high for her. Uh, Daddy, Susie knows what she's doing, really. Now, watch your rhythm. Rhythm, that's what these placing poles are all about. After the brush, there are three beats. One, two, three. You got left behind. Try it again. What is he doing now? He's raising it higher. Remember what those Cavalettis are for. That's better. You're behind the motion. Get with the horse. Right. Watch it! Are you all right, Susie? You're sure? Yes, I'm all you right. Hurt? I'm all right, Fred. It was so stupid of me. Can we try it again, Archer? Yes, of course. Uh, try nothing doing. The whole deal is off. What are you trying to do, kill her? I'm merely trying to help her get to Washington, which for some mysterious reason she seems to want. Now, come on, Susie, I'll give you a leg up. Susie, Susie, I don't think you should. I'm all right, Fred, really. Now, knees tighter this time. OK, I'll get it good this time. She's OK, Daddy, come on. All right, Susie, get with it now. <laughs> That's much better. OK, that'll be enough. Well, what do you think, Archer? I think you've been doing too much teaching and not enough writing. But you still have a talent. It's a 300 to one shot. But she does have a chance. And if you want me to help, I will. The decision is yours. Well, come on, young lady. Let's cool off this horse of yours. On to Washington, Freddy? Susie, I can't let you risk your neck to save mine with Tom Dugan. <laughs> You're just afraid that Aspie and I will be a flop. Are you demented? I think you're both great. 
then you're afraid you won't be able to sell Mr. Dugan. Oh, that's no problem. I mean, it's a natural, but... Then let's stop horsing around. On to Washington, Freddy. <sighs> On to Washington, Susie. <laughs> Good. <laughs> It's a big league, all right. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Washington International Horse Show. Circling the ring now in the Tally Ho coach are the distinguished judges for this evening's events. Does jumping start now? I don't know. No, ma'am. These are these are just the opening ceremony. ceremonies. Ceremonies. Uh, the first jumping class doesn't start till later. Uh, stay here, everybody. I'm going to see if Susie needs any. Freddie, sit down. You just saw Susie ten minutes ago. You'll only make her nervous. Yeah, right, right. During the next seven days and nights, over 120 class competitions will be held in this arena. Among the classes to be judged tonight, class 56. Ladies, Hunter Underside Saddle. Class 105, Tennessee Walking Horses. A special event, ladies and gentlemen. The Forest Hill Hunt Club with their prize-winning pack of hounds. By the end of the week, ladies and gentlemen, we will have determined the Grand International Open Jumper Champion. This award will be given to the horse that has won the greatest number of points in the entire Open Jumper division. In these classes, each knockdown is four faults, touches without a knockdown, no penalty. And now, ladies and gentlemen, class 72, Open Jumpers, bonus point. Okay. Okay, everybody. Susie's event. Fingers. Our first exhibitor, number 111, Anne's Joy. Owned and written by Miss Ellen Farrell. Lieutenant Mario Lorendo at your service, senorita. Susie Clemens. Your first international? <laughs> yes. I'm very nervous. This is my sixth international. And I am very nervous, too. <laughs> Number 111, eight faults. Eight faults, eight faults. The next exhibitor, number 744. The Chilean champion, Rascala, owned and written by Lieutenant Mario Lorendo. Isn't he a beautiful horse, Daddy? Beautiful horse. Terribly good, isn't he? Terribly. Number 744, Rascala. Four balls. 
Is Susie next? No, ma'am. She's the last entry. Last entry. Just keep them crossed out, Martha. Susie doesn't come on soon, I'm going to be a basket case. And now, the last exhibitor, number 320, Aspersell. Already? Owned by Miss Helen Bolton, written by Miss Susie Clemens. Okay, Aspie, let's go. Aspie, show him how. I didn't particularly like that third fence, Susie. You took a chance with it. But you got away with it. Number 320, Aspersell, written by Miss Susie Clemens. A clean round, no fault. No fault! Hey, no fault! Of course, no fault. That's my girl, Susie. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, the winner in class 72. Open jumpers, bonus point. First place, number 320. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, Susie. Oh, you need a Both work. Champion? Well, this is just a preliminary round, man. Prelim she gets five points for this win. Five There's points. still six days to go. Six days. I hope I make it.
Pal. Hello. Hi. Helen decided you and I should have dinner. Oh, oh Freddie, why don't you go to a restaurant and eat sensibly? I'm too jumpy to eat sensibly. Everybody thinks I'm coming completely unglued, you know that? You really are, aren't you? Oh, no, only when I see you go over those fences. I go over every one of them with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting psychological saddle sores from watching. Oh. Open your mouth. Big bump, open your mouth. Come on. Oh. There you go. <laughs> You know, you're the only woman I've ever met who looks beautiful chewing. Uh, Susie, I... Maybe I'll... I should wait on the moonlight and music bit, but, uh... <clears throat> I, uh... Every time I see you go over those fences, I figure I'd better hurry. I'm so no, 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 don't, don't stop me, because I might never get this out. Susie. Ah! Good luck, senorita. Good luck, Mario. Senor? Yeah, yeah. Buena suerte. Ah, gracias, gracias. Susie. Yes? Susie? Susie. Mr. Bolton, we just posted tonight's course. It's a monster. These first two fences are easy, but the third one is a... I think you better pay a little attention, young lady. Fred, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I, I just came to uh, wish you good luck. As I say, the first one is easy. Watch your going sure, to the second fence. Don't let him pick up too much speed. Now, as soon as you land, you take a sharp turn to the right. You're going to need all the impulsion you can get over this third one. Now, the fourth one, that's pretty straight, but you've still got to watch it all the way. Look at the size of this fence. You ever seen a spread that size before? <laughs> Try to knock him dead tonight. I'll uh, see you after you get him. Freddy, where'd you go? Come here. Freddy, come here. Come here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the climax of the Washington International Horse Show. The next event will be a jump off between Aspersal and Rascala. In this week's competition, these two finalists have tied in total points. Thus, the winner of this event will be the grand champion jumper of the Washington International Horse Show. For this event, we have departed from the standard jumping course by adding the Great Wall as a final barrier. In case of a tie, the wall will be raised for a second jump off me, against please. the clock. In just a moment now, the Open Jumper Grand Championship. Oh, calm is... Well, this is it, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, our finalists have flipped a coin, and number 320, Aspercell, written by Miss Susie Clemens, will be first to go. All right, Meatball, it's a little tougher than the others, but you can do it.
gentlemen, your attention, please. Aspercell, written by Miss Susie Clemens, has a clean round, a perfect score. Now, our second finalist, number 744, Rascala, written by Lieutenant Mario Lorenzo. Good luck, Lieutenant Mario. In this second jump off, ladies and gentlemen, time taken to complete the course will be the deciding factor if both horses have equal faults or clean rounds. First to go will be Rascala, ridden by oh. Lieutenant Mario Lorenzo. Now it's against the clock. And she still has the wall. Point what? Point two seconds. Point two seconds. 
Everybody we won! <laughs> Congratulations, senorita. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the first prize and trophy for the grand champion open jumper goes to Aspersal. Congratulations, Mr. Bolton. This must be a very big night for you. Well, it, uh, it is. It is. Good night, sir. Have I taken to his stall, Mr. Bolton? Uh, no, I'll take him. I'll take him. Come on, Ashby. Let's uh, open up some oats and celebrate. Okay, now this way, everybody. Good, good. One more. One more. Come on, come on, one more. Well, Asby, you did it. Won the big event. Well, saved my job, the Allied drug account. So how come I feel so miserable? I feel like we won the battle and lost the war. There you are. Well, hello there, and congratulations. And where were you? Oh, uh, here, there. I was uh, standing among your admirers, waiting to congratulate you. That's enough. Oh, you were, were you? Yes, yes, I was there, but you were uh, tied up. Oh, I'm sorry, Freddie. Everything happened so fast. I was looking for you. Well, it's no wonder you couldn't see me with your Mr. Madison smothering you with those victory kisses. <laughs> oh, Freddie. <laughs> You really are an ever faithful, true blue cornball type. Cornball? I'm so happy I could cry. That was just my way of thanking Archer. Without him, we wouldn't have won or anything. Yeah? That's all I promised. Now, wasn't there something terribly important that you wanted to tell me, but never got the chance to? Yes, there was. Yes, there it is. Come here. Come here, Susie. Susie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk fast. <laughs> Susie, 
Susie, I... Gary, we've been looking all over for you. Uh, I, I'll come back later. No, no, honey. Honey, come back now. And you started the whole thing, so don't give me the fake surprise bit. He finally got around to it. <laughs> finally. Ah, oh, Susie, I'm so happy for you. Daddy, <laughs> when's the wedding? The wedding? wedding? Oh, Daddy. Well, you made it a pretty short courtship. <laughs> does save a lot of dialogue, though, doesn't it? Hey, Freddy, come on. Dugan wants pictures of everybody with the soup bowl here. Get the trophy suit so you hold it. Let's get you right close to the horse. That's it. And closer. Beautiful. They like you. Come on, everybody close together. Alex, you set now. Look this way. It's like a big, happy family. <laughs> <laughs>